happiness is a choice. If I think I can only be happy if they like me, you're not going to be happy. You can't please everybody. You don't have to please everybody. You don't need everybody's approval to be happy. No matter what you do, somebody's going to disagree with you and disapproval doesn't have to ruin your happiness. You have that as a choice. You actually do. You don't wake up in the morning and negativity, dysfunction, problems and issues just randomly pop up. These are the people that you have decided to include in your life. So the outcome of your day, your hour, your minute, your week, your month and your year always dysfunctional and it's always draining because these are the type of people you've decided to include in your day-to-day -day life. Because in a situation where you got a point here, am I going to please God in this situation or am I going to please this person? When you take that long look and realize I'm going to give an account today for every word I say, it's going to change. It's going to give you confidence. It's going to give you courage. It's going to give you the ability to stand up and be a man in a situation that is constantly trying to put pressure on you to be politically correct or socially acceptable. You cannot expect yourself to feel good about your day when you're including negative and dysfunctional people in your day. So what their childhood friends? So what their family? We have a responsibility to walk in the direction of peace. I want to enjoy myself. I want to smile. I actually want to feel good about the people that are around me. None of us wake up and say, today is the day I destroy my life. What we do is we make these teeny tiny decisions. All day long, these tiny decisions that take you so far off track. And then you wake up like I did and, and you look at your life and you think, how the hell did I get here? And you have no idea. It has never been so easy to spend the best hours of your days chasing distractions. You can be distracted or you can get epic work done. You can't do both. If you go back to the people that love you, be very careful of taking their advice in an area they're not successful. Furthermore, if you wanted to get in great shape, why in the world would you take advice from somebody who tells you, ah, this doesn't work? You start taking advice from somebody who's not even in great shape, who's not even fit, and they steal your fitness dream. Take counsel from people who are successful in the area you're trying to be successful in. You have to compartmentalize success. Watch out with the relationships you have. What kind of person are you becoming because of the relationships that you have right now? Do those people contribute to you? Do they help you grow and develop yourself? What kind of person are you becoming? People can affect us. Our peers can affect us. Our environment can affect us. Just working consciously to overcome the poverty consciousness that I was raised in. The feeling constantly of saying, Les Brown, you deserve this. It's not too good to be true. It's true because you've earned it the old-fashioned way you have worked for it. Are you carrying weights that had nothing to do with you, that were completely out of your control? Are you being victimized by you? Come on, you don't have to radically do something. You can gain momentum and make changes as you go. Just start. It doesn't take much for you to feel good about yourself. Just commit it to a new direction and you feel good. Self-esteem starts to accelerate. You want to get better? You want to self-improve? Stop looking for a shortcut and find your guts and your passion and your drive and find your will. With the feeling of running out of time comes pressure, anxiety, fear. Some people try to snuff out everybody around them who's becoming what you wish you were. Envy and jealousy, depression and eating disorders and all come to help us cope with all of these issues where we are not progressing as well as we thought because we are running out of time.
You've got to chisel your character out of the raw material of yourself, just like a sculptor. Everything that happens to you, good or bad, is an opportunity for building your character. Character doesn't refer to other people. It doesn't refer to having power over other people or getting other people to follow you. Character is something that you have and that you are. Character is the person you are after you've chiseled and chiseled and have gotten past all the unnecessary material to what's underneath. You don't have anything to give that you don't have. So you have to keep your own self full. That's your job, that your real work is to figure out where your power base is and to work on the alignment of your personality with the real reason why you're here. That's, that's the number one thing you have to do, is to work on yourself and keep your cup full. Keep yourself full. Do you remember the last time you felt rejected? Was it a guy that never returned a phone call? Or maybe it was someone in your life who never thought you were good enough, no matter what you did to try to impress them. We all know rejection hurts. It makes us feel like we're not good enough. It causes us to question ourselves and doubt our future. I submit to you that rejection isn't something we should be afraid of. And it sure isn't something that should make us get discouraged, depressed, or work unhealthy amounts of hours just to prove to the world that we are somebody worth loving and paying attention to. It's always gonna be based on the people that you decided to include in your day, your week, your month, your year, your minute, your hour. When you go to sleep at night, how are you gonna feel about your day? Stop running around acting as if you don't have a choice. You do have a choice. You love rumors, you love issues, you love problems, you love it. That's why at the end of every night you are drained because you are some viewpoint. I already know what course of action they're going to take. How I view my stuff, how I view my possessions is going to determine what I do with those possessions. I don't think adversity by itself builds character. And I certainly don't think that success erodes it. You can build character by how you respond to what happens in your life. You build character out of certain qualities that you must create and diligently nurture within yourself. But the really amazing thing about character is that if you're sincerely committed to making yourself into the person you want to be, you'll not only create those qualities, you'll strengthen them. Character sustains itself and nurtures itself even as it's being put to work and tested and challenged. See, when you start growing, when you start changing the way you walk, the way you talk, the way you act, the way you respond to things, when you start saying no, so if, if people can put you on a guilt trip, they will. And use you and abuse you over and over and over again, you gotta draw the line. Don't go through life feeling like you're powerless. Victims are people that are powerless. You're not powerless. You are powerful. In an apple a day, committed to finally having a health program that'll make you the healthiest you've ever been in the next 20 years, all you got to do is munch on that first apple. But you munch on that first apple and say, this is the beginning of developing a health program that's gonna make me so healthy, I'll have the vitality to do whatever I want to do for the next 30 years of my life. You don't need some dramatic vision. Just begin something. That's how easy it is to change your life. You just get back on a better track. It's a small journey to changing direction. I wonder what your life would look like if you went back to your moments of rejection and rather than cry, get angry, you analyze those moments and reframe them as protection or projection. I wonder if you'd find keys that would unlock new paths in life that are far beyond what you can think or imagine. I wonder if buried beneath your pain and unfortunate circumstances is treasure that you could cash in. Are you going to go through the type of suffering that gets you closer to your dream or the suffering that moves you further away? It's the unnecessary suffering that these haters put you through that isn't fair to you. It's the suffering of emotion you feel. It's the suffering of fear you feel, of wanting to please everybody 
This is what I'd call false suffering. Suffering with no finish line. That's not who you are. That's just a perverted use of your power that you aren't satisfied with. And you've got the power to change that. Wherever you are, how, I don't know. But I know you've got the power to do that. It really doesn't matter what has happened to you. See, the only thing that really matters is what are you going to do about it? That's all that matters. That's all that matters. Meditation won't get you there. Getting better isn't a hack or a trick or a one change that you need to make. Getting better is a campaign. It's a daily, a weekly, it's an hourly fight. An incessant fight that doesn't stop against weakness and against temptation and against laziness. It's a campaign of discipline. It's waking up early and going to bed late and grinding out every second in between. You're not putting energy. You're not commanding your gift. You're not commanding your opportunity. You're not commanding your resources. You're not commanding your dreams and goals. You look at them jokers once every three months, if that's. You better be looking at them jokers every day. Where your focus goes, your energy flows. I need us to look at all the possibilities, all of the potential, and I need us to go for it every single day. Monday grind, Tuesday grind, Wednesday grind, Thursday grind, Friday grind, Saturday grind, Sunday grind. Every opportunity that exists, I need you to go after it. It is important in the area of motivating yourself, it's important to know why you're doing it. Because that mind will say, why bother? Why go through all this? This is too hard. No, throw in the towel. It's not worth it. Has it ever said that to you before? Here's how you can handle that. Here's how you override that. Write down five reasons why you deserve it. Why do you deserve what you want? Why you? Why do you deserve it? What meaning and value will it bring to your life? What's so different about you that you deserve your goal or this goal? And when you write down those five reasons, when you have some down moments and you're going to have them, when that conversation starts talking to you and it's going to talk to you, what you will do is you can pull that out and read it and it will build you up. If you want to be successful, if you want to dominate in the area, you got to let everything go but that thing you're pursuing. You can't chase two rabbits and catch both of them. So you put your attention on one and go after it. It will be your rod and your staff to comfort you through some challenging moments because you're going to have some. Life will knock you between the eyes. It will catch you on the blind side, come out of nowhere, stuff you can't anticipate. That will knock the wind out of you. You want to give up. That's why it's important for you to work on yourself, listening to tapes, building yourself up, talking to yourself with power, feeling, and conviction, building yourself up day in and day out because it's coming. Life will send you some curves you cannot anticipate. Champions are focused on the goal. They don't have time to be doing stuff that's not going to help them toward the goal. And so what you're focusing on throughout the course of the day, it has to change. What you're looking at, what you're reading, what you're watching, the conversations you have. You must now be focused on your dreams. You must be focused on your goals. The next thing is that whatever you do, you want to develop technical mastery. You want to be the best at what you do. You want to master it. See, part of, of, of self-motivation is you've got to find something that gives you a strong sense of competence. Well, you become known for that. You develop a reputation of being good at doing that. You set some high personal standards for yourself. You're not competing with anybody else. You're just unfolding yourself to be the best person that you could be. That you want to give the best quality service that you can give because that is a statement about who you are. The other thing that's the key to self-motivation is recognize the fact that you're going to get into some slumps. Recognize the fact that you're going to encounter a great deal of failure in life. It goes with the territory. But in the face of that, you want to be relentless. When you want something, 
You can, don't expect everybody to say, oh, come on in. We've been, oh, you want this? Oh, great. We want to give this to you. You're such a nice person. You're doing it for your family, aren't you? Great. No, no, life isn't like that. No, many doors will be closed in your face. Many loans that you will want. And they'll say, no, you don't have enough collateral. You don't have enough credit. And most people will give up. But you've got to decide that I'm going to be fearless. I refuse to be denied. And I'm going to go all out. I'm going to be relentless. I don't care how many no's I encounter. I like something Isaiah Thomas said when he's getting ready for a basketball game. He said, I'm going to either shoot us in or shoot us out, but I'm not going to not do anything. And that's the way to go. You can't make a basket unless you shoot the ball. You can't hit a home run unless you take a swing at it. Most people won't even take a swing. Well, I probably won't make it anyhow. That's the conversation within. They probably won't give it to me anyhow. If you want something, you've got to be relentless. You've got to decide, I deserve this and I'm going to have it. And you go all out to get it. That drives you. The next thing is that when you want something out of life, you've got to be willing to go into action. Don't wait around for things to be just right. Don't wait for things to be perfect. Don't wait for the ideal situation. It will never be ideal. There will always be a reason. Well, as soon as the children grow up, as soon as I pay my bills, as soon as I get my divorce, all kinds, as soon as I get enough money together, do what you can where you are with what you have and never be satisfied. A lot of people never take a chance in life. They don't want to take any chances. They want the situation to be ideal. See, that's not walking by faith. That's walking by sight. If I can see it, I'll do it. No, 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 no. That's a lot of people saying, if I can see it, I'll believe it. No, 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 no. If you believe it, you can see it. Because no one else can see it. That's not unusual. That is ordinary. But because you want some different kind of results in your life, you've got to be willing to be unreasonable. If you want unreasonable results in your life, you've got to be willing to be unreasonable. Part of being unreasonable, you don't judge according to appearances. Part of being unreasonable, you can see it because you believe it. That's part of being unreasonable. Part of being unreasonable, you're like Paul who said, you must have the faith to call forth those things that be not as though they were. That's part of being unreasonable. Most people won't do that. Most people say, call me when you get it together. <laughs> then I'll support you. <laughs> the other thing is that one of the keys to self-motivation that empowers you is that you want to find a cause larger than yourself. The first level to success in life, listen to me, the very first level is you seeing it like it's clear to you. You know exactly what you want. You know exactly when you want it. You know exactly what it tastes like. You know what it looks like. You know what it smells like. Before you really blow up, blow up, and you get success, you literally have it in the palm of your hand without having it. You gotta know what it looks like, tastes like, feel like, because you don't, you're gonna compromise. Winners complain. Winners wanna hear themselves talk. Champions do not complain, why? Because they're focusing on what they said they wanted to do as a goal. Find something that you can contribute to. Find something that you can make a difference because you can. Part of what feeds your larger vision, part of what gives you a reason for being, part of what gives you your life is being able to give something back. Say, I can't afford to give anything. You can't afford not to give. Give your time. Give your talent. There's nothing just to go over there and lick envelopes. I don't know exactly what I'm going to do, but I'm going over there. It's part of my tithing in the universe. Once you develop that, that special sense of mission, and that's what you develop when you're part of a larger cause than yourself, it drives you. 
You don't need an alarm clock to get up in the morning. You have special power. You go places and folk will like to be around you. They will know there's something different about you. When you go in, they'll say, hey, that's somebody important. I want to know who you are. I just want to be near you. That energy that you have, that consciousness that you will embody will affect everybody around you. The next thing is, is that you want to create a home court advantage for yourself. You've got to be aware of who you have around you. So you want to be selective. Have friends that will enable you to grow. I have friends that help me to grow spiritually. These are my spiritual friends. I talk spiritual stuff with them. I have some other friends who are just intellectual friends. They make me grow intellectually. They make me stretch. I have some professional friends. I'm a member of the National Speakers Association. I get together with other speakers and we learn from each other and we grow from each other. I have other friends who are just social friends. All we do is just socialize. We look at a basketball game together or go out dancing, but that's all we can do. We don't talk anything serious, nothing spiritual, nothing intellectual. That's not that kind of relationship. Nothing heavy up in here. Have other friends, we walk together. That's all we can do, walk together. Talk about we're going to lose weight one day by and by for good, all right? That's all we do, nothing else. So according to the relationships that you develop, we grow from people and projects. And the relationships that you develop can enhance and can enrich your life or they can drain you. I know many talented people who had a great deal of potential, but because they didn't surround themselves with other people that will inspire them to transcend themselves, they never realize their greatness and they will end up going to their grave with all their good stuff still in them. So you want to look at your relationships, the people that you're involved with, the people that you communicate with all, most often, and you want to ask yourself the question, what am I becoming because of this relationship? Does it inspire me? Am I motivated? Am I encouraged? Am I driven to develop myself? Am I seeking my own greatness? What kind of person am I becoming because of this relationship? Am I becoming more cynical and negative about life? Ask yourself that. The next thing is, you've got to say yes to your life. You've got to say yes yes to my dreams yes to me yes i can make it yes i can doesn't matter how many failures i've made doesn't matter how many mistakes i've endured doesn't matter about my defeats doesn't matter about what i've done yes yes i don't care about the fact i'm in a hole now doesn't matter about where i am yes the last chapter to my life has not been written yet. If you judge me now, you'll judge me prematurely. I haven't exposed all my stuff yet. I'm still in the process of transforming my life. I'm still in the process of becoming.